But the vast majority of the members of Congress, I believe, will be able to work out those, those uh, specific issues that are of national consequence. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Wow, she was just so thrilled to speak with him. She felt like she was in the presence of a rock star. Maybe she can get an autograph after this Q&A. <coughs> Not using his elbow cough, I noticed. Rub the face again. This is what a doddering old man does. And it might be unfair of me to constantly harp on that. Uh, but we're being told this is the competent alternative to Donald Trump. Why does Biden constantly have to rub his eyes and his nose? It's like, uh, does he want Kamala Harris to take office earlier than expected? Mr. President-elect, thank you. Again, the same precise phrasing, the respectful reporter. Thank you. Oh, thank you. We just, we're just one big happy family here. Thank you, reporter. Thank you, Mr. President-elect. We love each other, don't we? I'm still not sure if I heard you say specifically, though, sir, what is your ask of the Congress? What a peculiar way to phrase a question. So again, look at Biden's expression. He's in his brain. He's thinking, this man is attacking me. I have to defend myself. The reporter is simply trying to prompt Biden to attack Congress and attack the outgoing president. But Biden doesn't know that. In just one month's time, what is your ask of the Congress after you have watched over these many months when people in your party as well did not... You mean people in our party, don't you? Um, necessarily act as quickly as some Americans would have liked. What is your ask, sir? My ask... So the reporter has a very leading question. He's putting the burden of inaction on the Congress. He's not putting that burden on Nancy Pelosi. He, he and Biden dance around the subject. Nancy Pelosi has boasted in repeated interviews she withheld COVID relief in order to affect the 2020 presidential election will be laid out there in detail, but it relates to four things. Number one, making sure we have all the money we need to get the vaccine to three. See, Biden still doesn't know that the vaccine developed under President Trump is being distributed and people are receiving the vaccine at this moment. What, can someone tell the president-elect that this is already being done? 100 million Americans at a minimum over the next year, the next calendar year. Number one. Number two, making sure that all those people who are unemployed through no fault of their own because of the COVID crisis and small businesses and big businesses, etc. Now, when Biden talks about business relief, his administration coming in does actually have a specific on that, but it's going to be a tax write-off, and you have to apply for it for your small business. You'll get a tax deferment. He's not talking about real relief for your small business because... Real relief for your small business would be to get the small business in operation again, selling goods, selling services, and having customers. They do not want small businesses back in business for some reason. Biden's administration, as they come in, they favor big business and the mega corporations, the same people who put him in office. Small business owners, you are not part of the recovery equation as far as Biden and his team are concerned shutting down that they continue to be able to live day to day they don't engage in food shortages they're not in a position where they get thrown out of their homes see this is where biden and the democratic party want you to be they don't want you deciding about how well you're doing they want your decisions to be reduced to the most basic animal needs where you have to worry day to day about whether you have food you have to worry day to day about whether you have a roof over your head in Democrat-controlled states, they want you unable to earn an income and only able to appeal to the federal government for relief. That enhances their power. They do not want you to provide for yourself. They do not want you to support yourself. They do not want you being part of the expanding economy. When Biden talks about building infrastructure, he's only talking about enhancing the strength and power of the federal government I would also be asking for a moratorium on being evicted from your homes for failure to pay rent. 
moratoriums on relating to the issue of whether or not your mortgage are being paid. Thirdly, I think it's critically important we provide all of the PPE as well as the direct payments to small bid business. He is campaigning on complaints that his campaign made at the start of 2020. And these weren't even complaints that he authored himself. Someone handed his team complaints that New York State wasn't getting enough ventilators when Governor Andrew Cuomo wanted 20,000 ventilators. Biden is repeating criticisms of things that were handled in the spring of 2020. Can someone tell him that hospitals and uh, have enough hand sanitizer and masks and gloves? What on earth is he talking about? businesses and others to be able to stay open, to be able to keep their people employed. That is something that's going to increase as time moves. And lastly, so in Democrat states, he wants the government to pay people to still be listed as employees. They'll get a partial salary from the government, but the businesses, since they're still closed, will not pay them full salaries. And since the businesses are still closed, bars, restaurants, factories, they're all still closed in Democrat-run states, so they won't be generating any new income. His plan is to bankrupt these companies and these small business owners so that they have no one else to turn to but him. We're going to need to make sure that we're in a position that we can provide for the opportunity for people to begin to go back to work and get new jobs, developing infrastructure. In his view, the only new job that should be developed and I'm not putting words in his mouth. He just said this. New jobs should be developed, but only in support of developing infrastructure, which means growing government. And every time you grow government, the rest of the GDP shrinks. Narrow majorities in the House and Senate. You've watched many administrations come and go. Do you believe that you will have a honeymoon to get things accomplished? I don't accomplished? think it's a honeymoon at all. I think it's a nightmare that everybody's going through. In their so this is the phrasing of every question. Mr. Biden, you have such a tough job. How will you deal with those mean people in Congress? Again, uh, this reporter here, it sounds like he wants to uh, have a job at the Biden White House press office. I'll say it's got to end. It's not a honeymoon. They're not doing me a favor. You notice the reporter, he probably didn't spend one second worrying about the fact that Donald Trump did not enjoy any honeymoon from the National Press Corps from the day he took office and the, from the 2016 election. So if he didn't care whether Donald Trump had a honeymoon from the press, why does he care about that now with Biden? I'll ask you a rhetorical question. I don't expect you to answer. Oh, Mr. Biden, I'm so happy you're asking me a nice question. I won't ever reply or argue with you or counterattack or accuse you of being a racist like I did with Donald Trump. We're all smiles here because we're all on the same team. And that is, do you think that Republicans who are losing their businesses, do you think Republican constituents out there who can't pay their mortgage, do you think they're not letting their Republican representatives know they got a problem? Do you think the person who just lost some a family member and is worried about losing... So in Biden's world, Republican states, which are open for business, which have full tourism, people running their businesses, people going out and doing, doing their uh, everyday lives and activities. In Biden's world, uh, those Republican constituents will be demanding that every one of their Republican representatives and senators implement Biden's uh, agenda fully. That's what he just said here in answer to this reporter. So it doesn't matter what the question was. In Biden's mind, there's only one answer. Republicans have to do precisely what he says or they're killing your grandma. And that's how this reporter and his buddies will report it. Another one who happens to be a Republican, a staunch Republican, isn't telling his or her Republican senator or state representative, you've got to help, you've got to get something done. Do you think all those people who are making judgments of whether or not I'm, my child will be able to go to school and I have to stay home and I can't go to work? Your child has to stay home because they're in, you're living in a Democrat-run state. And Democrats want to keep you home because they figured that would be blamed on President Trump. Why that continues to be a policy after Donald Trump was defeated, I don't know.
work, therefore I have no income, are all Democrats. I think there's just been a dawning here. And look, you have a different team in town. You have a different team in town. I'm not going to villainize the opposition, but I'm going to stand and say this is what we got to do because they know it. They Interesting. The reporter just nodded in total agreement with the incoming president-elect. Can you recall a time where this reporter or anyone from his news agency uh, agreed with President Trump on any point Trump was making? You know it. It's not like I'm saying what we want to do is we want to make I sure that side um, side. we are going to uh, um, sign a new uh, trade agreement with A, B, or C. This is life and death. That's why I believe we'll get it done. Sir, if I could ask a follow-up to the... Sir? Sir? Huh. I don't recall anyone being deferential to President Trump like that. And again, look at Biden's face. He's indulging this reporter. He's being super nice to this reporter by allowing him to continue asking questions. Long past Joe's bedtime or his nap time or whatever. Attorney General decision. Uh, you and President Obama selected Eric Holder on December 1st. Every recent president has selected their um, attorney general by this point. What is taking you so long to make this critical decision? And do you believe that this is a time in the post-Trump era where you need someone who is not steeped in politics? So the reporter wanted to get this question in, which I believe the last reporter asked, and this guy wasn't paying attention. He wants to get the question in. So he's wrapped it into a warm blanket of Trump bashing. You have to bash Trump. He just repeated the lie that Donald Trump's attorney general, William Barr, was a political attorney general. But as we've seen, Barr did not investigate election interference. Barr did not prosecute Hunter Biden. And he's left office. So this reporter is lying for the Democratic Party. They created a narrative for the Democratic Party two years ago that William Barr was a political operative working as Donald Trump's personal lawyer. This reporter knows that that is a lie. He is continuing the lie. And while he's spinning these Machiavellian webs of intrigue, the problem is, look at Joe Biden's face. Joe Biden just sees this as, dumb reporter asked me about when I'm going to pick my attorney general. Here's Biden's dismissive, off-the-cuff response. Who may have a life's work above or beyond politics. The answer is, first of all, we've gone, we've gone faster than everybody in the total cabinet. So we... Uh, not President Obama and yourself, sir. The whole cabinet? The whole cabinet. The whole cabinet? Well, there were a few missteps on commerce, as you remember, but... I, I do. I'm sure. I didn't want to raise them, though. Right. Um, but look, um, uh, this Total is... Uh, we're looking for uh, a team uh, who will instill the greatest confidence the polite nodding in the, report. the professionals at DOJ to know once again that there is no politics. There's no politics. As you know, there's been a great debate about... An as opposed to the politics of Vice President Biden citing the Jones Act as a possible means of prosecuting the incoming NSA, Michael Flynn, in the last days of the Obama administration. We wouldn't want any politics at the Department of Justice while they figured out ways to harm the incoming Trump administration after the 2016 election, would we? Every single appointment, whether or not people, there are enough African-Americans, enough uh, Hispanics, enough Asian Pacific Americans, enough people who have are new and young. Why no homeless in the cabinet? If the cabinet needs to look like America and we have all these tent cities across states like California, shouldn't you have at least one or two homeless in your cabinet? And we were told that Donald Trump has neglected the illegal immigrants. Why don't you have an illegal immigrant as uh, a representative on your cabinet, too? We want to be diverse, right? So we're just working through it. It's not by design. There's not an obvious choice in my mind. Screen. You get to see the reporter thank nodding you, along. Thank you. Merry oh, Christmas. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank yous all around. No pushback. Nothing. Just abject worship from this total journalist hack that he and his news organization work for Joe Biden. They do not work for you. They do not work for the American people. Christmas. Now another reporter is being selected by the Biden administration's team. 
Biden's like, wow, this is pretty easy. So far, all they've asked me to do is repeat portions of my speech and bash President Trump. Let's see if I get a tough question now. Hey. And you couldn't barely hear her voice there, but she she did repeat the magical incantation required. She said, thank you, Mr. President-elect. Um, you just spoke about uh, your confidence that there will it'll be possible to get things done once President Trump has left office. Um, not, but not, oh, that's clearly a premise that's near and dear to her heart. Excuse me, not just because he's left office, because it's all becoming obvious exactly what's at stake. Right. But but even so, are you concerned about the effects long term that his presidency and, and now in the transition, his refusal to concede, his challenges to the election will have on American politics, will have on the Republican now, this reporter, again, someone's trying to get a job at the Biden press corps office. This is a, an example of a really tough question for Joe Biden. Are you concerned that the outgoing president is just so evil that it will harm our country just from him having been the previous president? Uh, now, this reporter looks very young, but it's, it's, a, it's fairly obvious. No one from her uh, news outlet would have asked that question of incoming President Trump when he took over from the Obama-Biden administration. So if it wasn't an appropriate question after the 2016 election, why is it an appropriate question for 2020? The answer is this reporter is a Democrat. She voted for Joe Biden, and she spent every day as a reporter working to support the Democratic Party. She is not working for the American people, and neither is anyone at her news outlet party, especially if he does take the step of filing for re-election next month, or running to run in 2024, um, you know, are, are you concerned about him lingering around? I know I see you smile. Are you concerned about him lingering around? Well, President Obama never left Washington during Trump's four years, so it's rightful to call this Obama's third term. She should have a question along those lines. But I still have to ask it. And um, kind of a corollary to that, um, would you consider filing for re-election early next year to show that you're not going to be a lame duck? So she's tossed him what she thinks is a series of softballs with the ultimate softball. That she's so thrilled at the wondrous changes he's going to make as president that not only does she ask him what horrible harm Donald Trump is causing while leaving the office, She's asking him, won't you please run again next time because I love you so much. Obviously, this is not journalism. Democracy has died in darkness, as per the Washington Post slogan, which they cre invented solely during the Trump administration. But the democracy has died in darkness, where news reporters like this think that they're asking insightful questions, when all they're doing is working as agitprop for the propaganda ministry of the Democratic Party. I'm not going to be a lame duck. Just watch me. Just watch me. I've been saying this from the very beginning. Look, let's just get the work of, wow, look at her from this point on for the next several years. What an impartial there is reporter. There's one objective. So, unbiased. And it's not my political future. It's bettering the circumstances for the average American. That's what it's all about. And I want to communicate to... So you have to wonder about this reporter... How does she earn a paycheck? What did her editor tell her as her instructions? What the American people would really like to know is how the modern news media operates. I would love to know what her precise instructions were by her news outlet, by her news editor, since she had been appointed as a pre-approved Biden questioner. What were her precise instructions by the company she works for? I would love to hear her instructions. They may have been written down in an email, but these are the things that would make the media transparent. What did her news editor say to her should be her questions? Because she clearly earned her paycheck with her line of questioning. Those were like three home runs in a row. The American people, what I hope they already understand about me, it's about them. It's not about me. It's not about me. Nodding. But still, do you think that the climate will be different? Okay, so she's nodding in abject worship. She just loves Joe Biden. And she's like, please, 
please, please, Mr. President-elect Biden, can you please say something negative about Donald Trump so I get that bonus and that vacation in Hawaii? Please, my career hinges on this. You've got to attack Donald Trump. Please help me out here, sir. After President Trump than it was before We'll, we'll see. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not... See, Joe Biden doesn't understand her angle. He's not a he's not a political ideologue like the news media, which is in a constant spin cycle. Joe Biden has an agenda. It's to expand the power of the Democratic Party. It's to expand the federal bureaucracy, which is tied deeply to the Democratic Party. And whatever this young lady has as her questions, she doesn't understand. That's not his line of thinking. Maybe someone on his staff would rise to the occasion. Biden's focus is different than what her focus is. She's acting like a sycophant, inviting him to bash the guy that just lost. It's not that he's not rising to her bait to bash Trump. He just doesn't understand the angle she's coming from. I'm not a fortune teller, but I can tell you that uh, the calls I've gotten from sitting Republicans in powerful position. She's not even paying attention to him. You know, you've got the president-elect in front of you, lady. She's trying to look for some question that she can ask him to, to get him to bash Donald Trump. This, this is the cream of the crop of the Washington press corps. They know me. They know I level with them. They know I never mislead. She might be so far away from his podium that she doesn't even know if he's looking at her. They know I tell them the truth, and they know I don't go out of my way to try to embarrass. Um, and in terms of the transition, are there areas where the Trump team has not been cooperative that... <laughs> he's he's laughing because th these these are sycophantic questions even President Obama didn't receive. When reporters asked President Obama if there was something enchanting he found about being president, these reporters are like that to the power of 10 with uh, Biden. They and this actually comes down to a lack of respect by these reporters and the press corps for Joe Biden. They respect him so little that they believe he needs all of this help to get over the finish line, and that he's going to need even more help from every reporter once he's in office. If you go through her list of questions for Biden, everything is, Trump is the evil monster, Trump's administration is, is evil, 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 what will you do to combat the evil? I mean, it's like she thinks he's a member of the Ghostbusters team and he's going to pull out the proton pack to banish Trump and his administration. Um, have not been made public. We've heard a bit about the issues at the, the Pentagon last week. Um, are there other areas that you think the public should be aware of? Please, 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 will you please bash Trump so I can get my bonus? I'm an impartial journalist. And when you see a young journalist like this and you think about the state of journalism today in 2021, remember this person is no exception to the rule. She was educated by America's university academia system, where Marxist professors, leftist professors, progressive professors, all Democrats, all satisfied government bureaucrats soaking off the public till, they educated young women like this to become advocates for the Democratic Party. She is not a journalist. She is not a reporter. Her full-time job is activism for the Democratic Party and the progressive left. There is no journalism on display here. There are other areas. I'm not sure it's relevant whether the public should be aware of. Look, what I'm trying to do... He's trying to sort through her butt kissing. She's achieved her goal. Her editor told her, kiss his butt and make him feel good. And he's trying to sort out some kind of sensible answer and wondering when, her, when this is all going to be over is pull together the political parties that are in the Congress. Bring the parties, that bring the parties together and bash Republicans if they don't do what I say. Crises. Which he just repeated and for the third time. we have to address all of them. None of us are get all we want, but we can make real progress. And so my focus... The vaccines are already here, buddy. What progress do you need? ...is on uniting, not emphasizing the divisions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so he thanked her, and she offered a tiny thanks in exchange. Now notice, if this had been a President Trump answer, the reporter would have started arguing with him. The reporter would have had a list of three or four 
counters to what the president said. And finally, the reporter would probably accuse uh, President Trump of being a racist. What a complete turnaround of attitude. There's a, a, a nicer climate in Washington, D.C., and it has everything to do with a press corps, which is all about spin and lying for the par political party that they favor. Once again, you can hear a Biden staff member selecting the next reporter. And they're so far away, Biden can't see who they are. He's wondering if it's Peter Juicy from Fox News. Maybe they surprised him? No. No Peter Juicy, sorry. And also, this is interesting to me. Just the lighting here is very ordinary. There's nothing exceptionally bright about this lighting. But since Joe Biden appears to have many physical frailties, even ordinary lighting for something like this is overwhelming his ability to function. Are we going to have to have a presidency in darkness? He, he, Biden was always talking about the winter of darkness and our darkest days are ahead of us once he takes office. He might mean that literally. We might have to have all the lights in the White House dimmed so that he can function in a lower light setting, you know, like a fungus or a mushroom. Thank you, Mr. President-elect. So once again, she has invoked the incantation. Thank you, Mr. President-elect. They don't name these reporters, but this is Yamiche Alcindor, media darling and star of National Public Radio and PBS. At every Trump administration press conference, she accused the Trump official or the president himself of being a racist. You can go find those clips on YouTube. I'm not going to repeat it here because I go so long. but. Uh, I was really looking forward to hearing her questions for Joe Biden. If she was consistent as a critic of government, if she was consistent as a nonpartisan, non-biased, impartial reporter seeking the truth, speaking truth to power, we would see similar aggressive questions from her for President-elect Joe Biden as she's done for the last four years, viciously and personally attacking Donald Trump. So I'm really looking forward to her great questions. Um, Russia, as you said, is suspected of uh, carrying out this massive cyber hack. Um, you said it happened under President Donald Trump's watch. Once again, the news story for this was written with anonymous sources at the New York Times uh, a week or two before Joe Biden said anything. They wrote a story saying Trump was in hiding, Trump was irrational, Trump was in denial, he wasn't acting, and a week or two later, suddenly Joe Biden started voicing this as his criticism. Then the reporters, 100% of them, reported this as Joe Biden's personal criticism of Donald Trump. Now we come full circle, Biden repeats this criticism in a 10 minute speech, and once again we have another reporter repeating what was already in the speech. But of course, in January 21, it will then, of course, land on your doorstep. My question is, what are... Now, this, this, this is hilarious. Biden's already getting defensive and angry. This is a brittle old man. He sees this as this line of questioning, which is one long softball windup by a sympathetic Democrat, Yamiche Alcindor. He sees this as yet another personal attack on him. He is mentally unfit. He's mentally deranged. He is not operating at his full mental capacity that he even had 10 years ago. Go watch interviews from Joe Biden from 10 years ago, and he's clearly in severely diminished mental capacities. There's a roughly 50-50 chance that when a reporter, either in the 2020 campaign or today, asks him a softball question, he will hear it the wrong way. He will get brittle and defensive and start attacking the questioner. And you can see this. He's about to do that right here. But let's go back to Yamiche here. She is asking him about something that was never an original thought from him or the Biden campaign that started as a media opinion piece, an opinion column, claiming Trump was hiding over Russia. We have a reporter asking Biden about something that was completely created by reporters, a fake news media narrative, purely invented in the corridors of the Washington, D.C. Beltway. They created this news story, handed it to the Biden administration. He ran with it. Now she asked him to comment on it again. 
In other words, she already has his 10-minute speech in front of her on her uh, cell phone there. So she's asking him to reinforce and repeat what he already said. The problem is, no one told Joe Biden that this has all been staged and arranged to make him look good. He thinks she's attacking him. I love it. Well, well, let's get something straight. will land on my doorstep. His failure will land on my doorstep. Yes. Yes. Wow. What a great admission there by Yamiche Alcindor, the supposed reporter who spoke truth to power for four years under President Trump who accused every Trump official of being a racist. Even the black surgeon general, she accused him of being a racist too. The, the essence of the peak hiring process of National Public Radio, NPR, and Public Broadcasting, PBS. This person, laughing along with Joe Biden and so ready to agree that everything is Trump's fault. Wow, so much for speaking truth to power. Not when you voted for that power, Joe Biden lady. Okay. What are the practical implications of overseeing a government where experts say it could take... Look at that sigh of weariness from Joe Biden. He's like, oh my gosh, I've been out here standing for 29 minutes. Won't someone please let me sit down? How am I ever going to get through the next four years of this job? I may just sign... The 25th Amendment, uh, after I take the oath of office and let Kamala Harris be the president the next morning. This is so tough taking all these softball questions. Years to know where the hackers went and years to remove them. How can you ensure that, that the systems will be safe given what experts are saying? Obviously, if you detailed your precise response to the hackers who conducted the cyber attack and you outlined the punitive steps taken that will be taken against or already being taken against the nation state that sponsored them, that would be extremely ill-advised. You would be giving valuable information to the hackers. You would be giving valuable information to the nation state that got away with this outrage by relating anything about our response. That is what Joe Biden should tell her. Let's see what he says. I can't ensure, but I can demand, based on the experts both here and among our allies, what is needed to find that out. Now, he said that originally in his 10-minute speech. He would create a new framework of allies and other all countries in the, in the world that can conduct hacking. When one, of those country, when one of those countries is shown to have hacked another country, like Russia to America, or like China did during the Obama-Biden administration with the OPM data breach, uh, Joe Biden has said that now three times in this press conference that he will go before this group of nations which might be called the United Nations maybe it's already in, in place and he'll point a finger at the nation state responsible and say neener neener we caught you you are very bad and then that nation state is supposed to look ashamed look down at their shoes and then look at Joe Biden and say we apologize Joe you caught us you're right we were so bad and we'll never do it again that's literally what he's saying will happen. It's, it's absurd, it's childish, it's ludicrous that his plan to create a panel of nations to agree on what is good and what isn't good hacking is, is ridiculous. Uh, it's not going to do anything to wag your finger at somebody and say, we caught you, which is precisely what every journalist for the past month has been demanding President Trump do, and which he has not done because Donald Trump is a thoughtful and intelligent commander-in-chief. It may cost literally billions of dollars to secure... Oh, so it's going to cost billions of dollars to secure computer networks, which they already spent billions of dollars securing, showing that you didn't design them properly in the first place. Maybe you should get rid of computer networks altogether and go back to paper filing cabinets. Secure our cyberspace. It may take a great... Wow, she nodded in polite agreement. So far, she hasn't accused him of racism or having anyone in his staff that's a racist. This is very odd behavior from NPR star Yamiche Alcindor. Um, I'm sure she'll get around to calling him a racist, but so far she's too busy nodding along in agreement. And uh, also, oddly for her, there's no interruptions of uh, his wise points. ...deal to get it done. 
first and foremost, it takes people who are knowledgeable and vigilant about what is happening and how it's happening. And so I'm just going to do all that need be done. So once again, he has no plan for fixing the Russian cyber attack. He will consult with experts once he's in office, which is essentially what he said for this entire press conference. I don't know anything, Joe Biden says, but when I do, uh, it will be because I consulted with a team of experts who I have not yet asked any questions of, whether it's doing a, uh, a flight travel ban from the UK, whether it's cyber hacking, or anything else. I have made no decisions about them or an attorney general. I will always consult a team of experts in the future. So instead of this massive briefing book that they put in front of Joe Biden, they could have had just a, you know, a large Helvetica 96 point type font on a big poster that says, I will consult with my team of experts and we'll decide then. And that could have been his response to every one of these reporters and also the content of his speech. All that need be done to determine. Is that like the eighth or ninth nod of agreement from impartial NPR reporter Yamiche Alcindor? A, the extent of the damage. B, the nature of how it occurred. C. See, he's trying to sound commanding here when he has absolutely no idea what happened. He never made the original complaint. Someone from his staff put the news story in front of him stating that Donald Trump was in hiding over this data breach. So he didn't make the initial complaint. He didn't have any thoughts at all on the topic. He's falling back on what he does best, which is give vapid, empty Senate speeches. So here he's going, one, two, three, we will do this, and we will do that, and we will ascertain the truth. This is like, like him 30 years ago during the Judge Clarence Thomas hearings. Uh, he's not saying anything. He's just saying, well, I have no information, but once I consult with my team of experts, we'll do one, two, three. What I should be doing internally in terms of my administration oh, to protect against it in Where's the future. Where's your interruptions for this president, number Yamiche? Four, getting together with our allies to try to set... For the fourth time in 30 minutes, Joe Biden says we'll have to get together with our allies and when we catch the hackers the next time, we'll wag a finger at the nation state and say, Aha! You joined our group of anti-hacking nations, and now we've caught you. And we're going to penalize you with a firm finger wagging. Set up an international system of what constitutes appropriate behavior in cyberspace. Now, any sane reporter would take that phrase and laugh in his face about it. An international system of cyberspace agreements where you're in violation of this agreement if you took all of our secrets. Every nation state that wants to hack our computers just is laughing their asses off at this stupid infantile statement by the president-elect. And it's precisely why Donald Trump made no such similar statement, uh, which would have made him look incredibly foolish and unprepared for the job of being president. Donald Trump has not said anything along these lines because Everyone would have rightly called it stupid. But now with Joe Biden, we have to treat him with kid gloves. He's fragile, both mentally and physically. We have to nod at everything he says and just gently lead him along. Maybe she has a question to bash Trump here after this, because this is, this is hard territory for Joe Biden. He said he's now had to say for the fourth time he's going to create an international commission of anti-hacking where you will go to the <laughs> international commission and say... Darn it, Russia hacked us. We're so upset with them. And then they're going to like file a report or something with Russia and take it to the Russian ambassador who's just going to drop it into the trash can. And get us all to get to the point where we hold all hold any other country liable for their breaking out of those basic rules. How? Are you going to nuke them? Are you going to declare war on them? Are American tanks going to roll across Eastern Europe and crush Russia? No. So... How are you going to hold them accountable? Maybe uh, Angela Merkel will cancel that natural, natural gas pipeline uh, that she signed with Vladimir Putin. You know, where uh, Donald Trump asked her, why are you signing energy deals with Putin when we've got bases all over Germany to protect you from a, an invasion by Vladimir Putin? Donald Trump asked those tough questions of our allies. But you can be assured, 
Joe Biden will never pressure Angela Merkel or Germany in that same manner. And just to be clear at the top of that, did you say you couldn't ensure that the systems would be safe when you came into office then? She's trying to give him a nice, easy softball. He doesn't understand that he's that she's trying to create a news story here where the headline will be, Joe Biden promises perfect safety and security. She's on board. He's not because he doesn't understand her angle. So you look in the pain in his face. He thinks that this woman is badgering him. He thinks that she's attacking him. He thinks that she's telling him he's not capable of doing the job. Whatever deep psychological fears that he needs to tell to a psychiatrist about not being fully 100% of taking the oath of office this month, that's on Joe Biden's face right now. So he's hearing criticism of him. Is he up to the job? Even though that's not what she's saying. He thinks she's attacking him. She's not. She's doing everything she can to butter him up for an easy news story about how he's going to solve every problem in America from A to Z the moment he takes office. He doesn't see that because he doesn't know what she's talking about. All he does here is that this woman is bashing him, so it's time to get defensive. It's time to get brittle. Of course I can. I don't know what the state of them is. Nodding in total agreement. She's nodding. She's trying to help him. Mr. Biden, just let me help you write this beautiful article where I get a Pulitzer Prize praising your wonderful work. He doesn't understand what she's saying. They're having two different conversations. All she can do is nod and hope he catches on. They're clearly not safe right now. And then between now and January 20th, the likelihood of my being able to garner all the information, the extent and depth of the violations, exactly how the codes are. So apparently this Russian cyber attack happened years ago. So whatever the response was of our country, when our country learned of it, was clandestine and secret. Uh, if you wanted Donald Trump to give a long, detailed speech of all of our secret countermeasures, which would be ongoing, uh, that sounds like you're ask, you, would, you were asking Trump to commit treason by revealing national secrets before uh, a hostile press corps. They don't expect Biden to do that, uh, but that's what he thinks she's asking him. She's asking him to violate uh, secret uh, confidentiality of our uh, response. Uh, so it's, it must be nice to be Joe Biden. You can criticize Trump for not publicizing his response to the cyber data breach. And at the same time, he can say, I won't tell you what my response will be to the data cyber breach until I consult with my team of experts. Well, what, why, do, why, why can't Trump just say that for four straight years? He should have just said, I'll consult with my team of experts. And that would have been the Biden answer for every question. It's what Obama did to coast through eight straight years of saying, I will consult with the team of experts and never answer a darn thing. How we were breached, what was breached, what was done is not within my power to do that, but it will be. Why are so many questions from these reporters on this data breach? One, it represents one last opportunity to bash the outgoing Donald Trump. She has a copy of Joe Biden's speech. Half the speech was about this. If these reporters probably got together over martinis afterwards, wouldn't it have been great to put these five reporters together, have them discuss over drinks, and just listen in to what they thought after as an after-action report? What would they have thought of Biden here? Probably what these reporters would have come to as a consensus was, why, if Joe Biden's team had him spend half his speech on this cybersecurity, why was he so unprepared to answer our softball questions about cybersecurity and the Russian cyber attack. Because he has the same defensive answer, which is a repeat of what he said during his speech. He and, he and each time he acts greatly surprised that they're asking him this, as if they're attacking him before he can even make these changes to fix what's wrong, when it was probably fixed a year ago anyway. These reporters would get together and say, hey, you know, his team needs to put, to put this together better next time because they're doing everything they can to help him knock this out of the park. Knock it out of the ballpark, Joe. And he keeps spinning on that baseball diamond and flopping onto the ground. And you can see the frustration in the, the faces of these reporters. They're nodding. They're doing everything they can to help Biden. 
Uh, and if, if this doesn't work, the fallback is to invite him to bash Trump. An overwhelming focus for my administration. And my Again, nodding in full acceptance. So we're through multiple questions from Yamiche Alcindor, who holds uh, the powerful accountable. She speaks truth to power. She has nodded continuously through his answers. She has not argued with him. She has not accused him of being a racist. She has not come up with counter arguments. She has not dismissed his statement. Uh, she is looking to lead him by the nose to a particular answer so that she can then write a really nice puff piece article about him. Maybe she could do an interview on 60 Minutes after this and talk about how wonderful it is that we finally have a president that's going to solve all the world's problems. But no, Biden is not cooperating. And you can see from his facial expression here, he's not on board with her agenda. He doesn't know what she's doing. He has no idea that every one of these reporters is trying to save his butt. The question is on immigration. Um, yes. I was just reading about the fact that officials in your transition, Jake Sullivan, Susan Rice, they say you won't be immediately rolling back Trump immigration policies. And I uh, that's because Trump followed the letter of the law. Trump continued Obama's immigration policies. When you see Democrats demagoguing about families being separated at the border and children being thrown in cages, those are Obama's policies to separate families at the borders that were already in place when Trump took office. Those are Obama's cages to throw children in when they're separated from their families at the border. And those are Obama's detention facilities built before Trump ever took office. She's got another agenda item. She's not on board here, but basically her attitude is, would you please bash with me all of the Trump policies that were actually continuations of the Obama-Biden policies regarding border immigration. And Biden is trying to struggle through this muck because the Democrats have told so many lies about Donald Trump that they don't understand that actual Democrat officials who implemented those policies are the people that are now in power. So she's trying to get Biden to bash Trump for continuing a policy that Obama and Biden administered. I express immediately um, there are some immigration that? advocates like, who say, well, why not roll up? back the Remain in Mexico policy? Why not roll back the asylum restrictions? What is your time? When is she going to shut up? I need my nap. Timeline for rolling back some of the specific. I've answered her questions. I've repeated what I said the, to the last three reporters. Why won't she just shut up and let me go home? Big Trump administration. Oh, my God. I am so tired. Tired of this administration tired of this campaign, tired of this presidency, and I haven't even taken office yet. Immigration policies. Look at the weariness on We've already guy's started face. discussing these issues with the president of Mexico and our friends in Latin America. Oh, you mean like how President Trump negotiated the USMCA trade deal where Mexico is actually paying for the border wall? Um, and the timeline is to do it so that we, in fact, make it better, not worse. The last thing we need is to say we're going to stop immediately the, uh, you know, uh, the access to asylum the way it's being run now. Now, Biden has actually given his normal answer as someone from the Obama administration, which is we continue the policies that we set up. Donald Trump didn't change any of them for the most part. In her view, Joe Biden would cancel every Trump policy the moment he took office. Uh, the problem is Trump simply continued existing border law policy. And end up with uh, 2 million people on our border. Now see, 2 million people on our border from a Hond Honduran migrant caravan where people grabbed some child on the street and held them up to get across the American border. That was desired with President Trump because they were able to say, look at meanie Trump keeping this dad from taking his non-related child across the border. That was the goal with the press corps then. Now, if you have caravans show up on the border with President Joe Biden, suddenly it's not politically convenient. Suddenly it's not politically desirable to have entire populations from Central America trying to flood into our country. She doesn't understand why the propaganda that her news outlets spread for four years about meanie, anti-Mexican, anti-Latino Trump had no basis in reality 
had no basis in law, had no basis in facts. She has no idea that the agitprop she's been spewing for four years was purely for political points to turn out Democrat voters at the polling precinct. Joe Biden is trying to remind her that once a Democrat is in office, there is no homeless problem that is the problem of the president. Once a Democrat is in office, there is no Im illegal immigration problem that is the fault of the president. Once he takes office, those problems go away, and they're only going to be reported in terms of meanie Republicans in Congress. It will not be his fault that they are illegal immigrants. It will not be his fault that they are homeless. None of that will be his fault because a Democratic president is never held to account for any of those policies. Um, it's a matter of setting up the guardrails so we can move in the direction I will accomplish what I said I would do. Nodding in agreement. After she, she's, she's slowly percolating through her brain that the talking points she's used for four years have no basis in reality. Joe Biden is telling her, I don't want two million people at the border. He's going to enforce existing border law, which is what the last, pre the outgoing president is doing. Enforce existing border law. Yamiche. Much more humane policy. But no, based she on nods along. There's no arguing. But it requires getting no a lot in place. It requires Mexicans. getting the funding to get it in place. Not along. Including along. just asylum judges. You for love example. Biden and he loves So you. it's a matter of it will get Sorry. done. And it will get done quickly. But it's not going to be able to be done on day one, lift every restriction that exists and find out that and go back to what it was 20 years. Yamiche firmly believes that Donald Trump is racist and hates black people. Is there any indication from this exchange that Joe Biden likes her any more than Donald Trump? Think about it. Years ago and all of a sudden find out we have a crisis on our hand that complicates what we're trying to do. Would you say to immigration, what would you say to immigration advocates then who say maybe you're... you're now, this is interesting. Uh, I always think of the Democratic Party and their various Democrat front groups as being fully integrated with their goals and mission. For the most part, that's true. So when Nancy Pelosi blocked all COVID relief in September or in October, none of these groups that were advocating for relief for the uh, American suffering said a damn thing because they knew Nancy Pelosi was working for the same goal they were to defeat Donald Trump. Now that Trump's out of the way, we're seeing some fractures here in Biden's unity. And uh, I love it. Possibly dragging your feet too, and it might take too long. Are you? It... I don't know what she just said, but she just said, I'm dragging my feet and I haven't even started the job yet. And my feet hurt right now. And I've been standing for 32 minutes. What is this angry woman saying? Sounds like you're saying I you said, need to be patient. Me. See, once again, brittle, defensive Joe Biden thinks that a friendly, sympathetic reporter who has not pressed him in any way is attacking him personally. This man is incapable of conducting the office of the presidency. He can't even complete a single sentence or a thought without help. Look yeah. at me. I've never told him anything I have. See, she doesn't, she doesn't understand. She's offering him some softballs and open the borders up the minute you take the oath of office, Joe. And she's trying to give him a softball. She's repeatedly asking him, what bone can I toss to all the illegal immigration activists who want open borders right now? Now, Joe Biden's answer, if he was cogent, would be this. Hillary Clinton promised open borders in 2016. I didn't. Get out of my face. That would be the shortest answer. But he can't say that to her because he wants to appear as the nice, genial old grandpa who's going to offer you a bowl of soup and tell you everything's all right. That's the narrative of the Biden campaign for all of 2020. This nice, genial grandpa who's going to offer you a bowl of soup did not appear at this press conference. I've been done. I'm working with them now. We're dealing with some of those very organizations as we speak. Taps and I will podium. do what oh, I said. She nods in agreement. You're working with those organizations, and I work with them too, because I am an ultra-Democrat activist at NPR, not a journalist. It's going to take not day That's one. Like, what, the 14th time she's nodded in agreement to him? I wonder how often she nodded in agreement with President Trump, or Mike Pence, or the Surgeon General. And it's going to take probably the next six months to put that in place. Oh, see? Don't ask me this again for six months. There's your answer, lady.
what immigration advocates lied about to people to get them to vote Democrat, the Democratic Party and the news media lied every day to Latino voters to get them to turn out on November 3rd and vote for Joe Biden. Now that Biden's in office, he says, hey, that was never my policy to open the borders. I'm not going to do that. Ask me again six months from the time I take office. Yamiche Alcindor meekly and demurely accepts his dodge, doesn't pressure, doesn't question, doesn't make accusations, doesn't argue. She meekly moves on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and a warm, heartfelt smile. We have not seen this once from her when interrogating Trump officials or President Trump himself. Now, Biden's smile here is really along the lines of, you wouldn't even be hired as my housekeeper at one of my mansions. That's his face right there. His face is like, I really bent over backwards to indulge you and your idiot questions. She's going to go right back to her office and she's going to get congratulations all around from the rest of NPR and PBS. And she'll be promoted. She'll probably get another book deal out of this. Maybe put on a speaking tour for a million dollars in appearance. Meanwhile, the man she just talked to is like, Man, never let her ask me another question again. I hate that woman and her race. That's what's going through Biden's mind right here. You can see on his face, he's like, Never put this person in front of me again. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everybody. We're at the end of the press conference. Somehow Biden got through it. Congratulations to him. Kudos. This is the longest speech and question and answer period that he conducted for all of 2019 and 2020. The Biden administration assistant off screen is telling the reporters to pack up and leave because that's all he was scheduled to answer. He was scheduled to answer those precise questions from those precise media outlets. Thank you. So that's Peter Ducey from Fox News. He's followed Biden at every single appearance as Biden campaigned. He was never granted an interview with Joe Biden. What he asked Joe Biden, he didn't ask Joe Biden anything other than Joe Biden and his campaign said that allegations about Hunter Biden's financial misconduct as the son of Vice President Joe Biden were dismissed as, quote, Russian disinformation. That was in the fall. So he's asking him simply, do you still believe that was Russian disinformation? Biden dodges the question and laughs it off. So I was wrong. I am wrong. Biden did get a tough question, and it was simply a yes or no question. Does your campaign or you still think it was Russian disinformation that your son engaged in financial misconduct? Thanks him, but he won't grant him an interview. And that's uh, the, the end of this. So I apologize for going so long. I did it for two reasons. One, I wanted to be very detailed here on the q and A, I I thank CBS News for making the egregious mistake of showing reporter reactions nodding along in agreement to the man they voted for and supported and campaigned for every second of their professional workday, Joe Biden. Thank you, CBS News, for showing us that. The other news outlets did not. They kept the camera close on and tight on Joe Biden. The other reason is this video series by me, I plan for this to be my final political post. Um, I, I simply have no reason to repeat these complaints and these comparisons and these critiques for future Biden speeches, for future Biden Q&A press conferences, because the Biden speeches will be the same and the Q&A will be the same. There's no reason to make new ones because this template, which they created here before he was put in office, I believe will be identical to every Biden speech and press conference for the remainder of his time in public service. And with that, I will focus on trying to survive the next few years of darkness as promised by Joe Biden, as darker days are ahead of us, which he promises are coming under his leadership, and uh, try to uh, live my life as best I can. So, signing off, and I wish you a 
successful and prosperous new year.